On the 3rd of September 2019, the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies, or RSIS, published a commentary defending Singapore against foreign interference. There was a line in this commentary, Singapore was a target of foreign interference during the Cold War. In the 1970s, the Eastern Sun newspaper had received funding from Chinese communist elements to publish articles to shape the political attitudes in Singapore. The Singapore Herald newspaper had received funding from Southeast Asian elements to campaign against national service. RSIS presented all this to the reader as fact. But they are not facts, they are allegations. Even though many in the PAP, from LKY to Shan, have repeated these allegations, they have never been proven. Many academics, including Singapore's primary historian, Mary Turnbull, have raised doubts about these allegations. So a scholar cannot present this to the reader as fact. You must say this is a PAP allegation that has been disputed by historians. So I sent an email to the writer asking simply for a redaction. No reply. Then I emailed the writer's editor. The editor replied to me saying, it's a difference of opinion. I replied back saying, you are entitled to your own opinions, but not to your own facts. Please redact. Again, silence. Never mind, I moved it up the hierarchy. Two more levels of RSIS till I was emailing the bosses. Still, no reply. Over a three-month period last year, I tried to settle this properly, professionally. But they all bochak me lah. I'm just some kuching kurap writer, right? And this is what really worries me. It is not the original mistake. Being in Singapore, I understand that the PAP and LKY have controlled and owned the dominant historical narratives of our country. Now, we can discuss the rights and wrongs of this some other time. What I simply want to say is that I understand if scholars accidentally take the PAP at its word. However, if somebody points out your mistake, own up la, admit it, make the correction, move on. But no, cannot. Sheer arrogance along with untouchability. And that is how the establishment helps the PAP transform allegations into fact. Think about it. A scholar anywhere in the world now can quote this piece by RSIS and suddenly a newly created fact would have spread around the academic world. Shame on you, RSIS. Imagine if tomorrow somebody from the PAP accuses me. Hmm, let me think of something really outlandish and crazy. Yeah, somebody from the PAP accuses me of being a traitor under the payroll of the China government. And then the next day, RSIS writes a piece about foreign interference and transforms that allegation into fact. So now I am officially a running dog of Beijing. Imagine that, me a China agent. Amma, my ancestors in Kerala and Rajasthan will turn in their laddu filled graves. Yeah, let's go. Hello, Rimbu is here. Wow, it's real one. Hello, to see our tax dollars spent to fluff up the personal brands of two millionaires. Instead of leading a fruitful, comprehensive national discourse about POFMA, what the PAP did was drown us in pointless propaganda. And the best example of this was the conversation with Michelle Chong. This was just a big PR exercise, no meaningful exchange. And let me tell you just how shameful this was. The interplay between truth and fiction is a key tenet of any artist's work. Michelle Chong relies on this dynamic in almost all her work. And yet here she was for a few dollars more, helping the PAP take away that power, helping the PAP become the guardians of truth, 
Not the final arbiters, but the first. Think about Donald Trump's so-called Muslim ban. Now imagine if Trump paid a Muslim artist to appear on screen with him to help sell the Muslim ban, to help sell out their entire Muslim community. That's exactly what Michelle Chong did. By becoming Shanmugam's Pofma tool, she essentially sold out her entire creative class. Let me be clear about something. There is nothing wrong with artists taking government money and performing for the benefit of all Singaporeans and Singapore at large. National Day Parade, President's Young Performers Concert. This is not a critique of conscientious artists who should keep up the good work. Jia yo! But if, like Michelle Chong, you take taxpayers' money to further the interests of one party, uh, hey, Michelle, why don't you just go and stand for election la? Otherwise, I suggest you stick to what you know best, plundering and caricaturing ethnic stereotypes. I know it's so hard today, making me so thirsty. Hey, look, lolly bed! Bubble tea. No, Nina, it's your third cup today already. I, I got something to show you. You wait, ah. Uh. 